Okay, well, I'd like to welcome everyone to another Sunday service of Christ Reformed Church. I'm Pastor Ferguson. It's great to be gathered together in the name of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, we're living in some difficult times. Uh, pandemic, financial uh, distress throughout the world. You know, uh, it's not easy to live in this day and age, but uh, with God's grace, all things are possible. Amen. Today I'm going to talk to you about money. Everybody likes money. You know, I enjoy money. And I'm able to buy things with it. Um, necessities. You know, there are some people who love money, and the Bible speaks against that. So the, the love of money is the root of all evil. So we have to be careful with our money. You don't want to go into debt. So the Bible speaks against that. Uh, if you're in debt, you become a slave of the lender. So we need to have a proper understanding of money, a biblical understanding. If you're a child of God, if you're a Christian, Jesus spoke a lot about money. <clears throat> the Bible speaks a lot about money all through in the Old Testament and New. And we're going to see what uh, God has to say about money and how we're to view money and use money because it is a part of our lives. Uh, before we do, let's go to God and work to God in a word of prayer. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come unto you this hour in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I confess our sins unto you. We pray for your forgiveness. We ask you to cleanse us of all iniquity and create in us clean hearts, O Lord. Uh, that you will give us a proper understanding and wisdom concerning money, uh, how we're to use it, how we're to obtain it, uh, how we're to save it, <clears throat> and how we are to uh, view it and, and look at it. Uh, we just thank you and praise you for all the blessings you've blessed us with and the money you have given unto us. Uh, it is our prayer that we'll be good stewards of the money, we'll not hoard the money, or we will not be wasteful of the money uh, that you allow us to have, but that we will be useful with it, uh, helping the poor and, and putting it to good use for the things that, that others need, that we need ourselves. We thank you and praise you and love you for uh, giving up your only begotten Son. Lord Jesus Christ took all our sins upon himself uh, so that we can enjoy everlasting life with you. We can worship you and love you and adore you for all eternity. Uh, we ask you to teach us the truths of your word in this hour and be with all of your children. Comfort us in the midst of our uh, sufferings and tribulations and protect all, the, all your little ones uh, from all hurt, harm, and danger. We pray you bring an end of abortion and child abuse, kidnapping, uh, all these evil things to little children. You will stop these things in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We just thank you and praise you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So money today. What is money? Well, money is something that man created. Uh, God did not create money. God created the trees and the animals um, for food for us. In the beginning, you know, it was just the trees. And Adam didn't need to kill anything, but after the fall... Um, Things started dying, <laughs> and God gave the provision to eat meat. Um, maybe our bodies got changed because because of the fall. I'm sure they did, physiologically, and because man's life is has been shortened um, because of the fall. You know, we're men and women that live 900 years more now. Maybe 120 uh, <laughs> is the max. Most people don't make it uh, even to 100. At any rate, uh, we need to look at God's Word. And uh, yes, man created money. Um, where exactly was it created? Well, nobody really knows. So maybe the Egyptians or the Babylonians or, um, you know, somewhere. The Romans and uh, Greeks, of course, they had their money. Um, but it's the reality. And um, we need to take a look at uh, what the Bible has to say. Uh, Proverbs 23, verse 4 and 5. Labor not to be rich. 
cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle towards heaven. Proverbs 23, verse 4 and 5. You know, Jesus said, Lay not up treasure for yourself here on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, but will lay your treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust are, and thieves don't break through and steal. You know, what you're laboring for, if you're just laboring to get rich, then you have no treasure reward in heaven. You're not doing anything for the Lord now, even, uh, if you're just laboring to be rich. Okay? But if you are laboring for the kingdom of heaven to be rich, you're laying up treasure for heaven, then you're going to be helping the poor. You're going to be helping those in need. You're going to be giving a lot of money away uh, to help other people. But as you do that, uh, you are rewarded by God uh, in this life and in the life to come. You know, God rewards us a hundredfold uh, for whatever we give away for the cause of Christ. Okay, you give it, Jesus said, you give a cup of cold water unto one of these little ones of mine, you've done it unto me. Right? So we can use money. Money can be used for good purposes, for the furtherance of the gospel, uh, to help God's children, and help, to help children in general. Um, Psalm 37, 16. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. <clears throat> you know, it's better to be saved than it is to be rich. A lot of people don't understand that. They think that money is everything and that it's better to be rich than, than to be saved or to be a Christian. And that's just not the case. Uh, can you be rich and a Christian? You know, Joseph of Arimathea, one of Jesus' disciples, the, the disciple that bought the body of Jesus uh, from Pontius Pilate, he was rich. We don't know how long he was rich, but he had a lot of money. The Bible says he was rich. And it says that he was one of his disciples. So, evidently he was using his riches uh, for Christ. Probably supporting Christ and his disciples. You know, that's okay, uh, as long as your money is being used um, for the cause of Christ, you know, and God is multiplying it. It's okay to have an abundance, as long as it's being used for the cause of Christ, and you're not just buying houses and cars and fancy clothes and jewelry and, you know, stuff that you don't need. God knows we need shelter, we need food, we need clothing, and uh, He makes sure and He provides that for us. But to hoard and just to have a lot of money just to sit on and not help other people, that's wrong. Okay. Um, let's see. Psalm 37, or I'm sorry, James 2 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? So, you know, Isaiah says that the gospel is preached to the poor. Uh, generally, it's the poor that receive the gospel. Uh, not, I shouldn't say generally. It's always the poor that receive the gospel more than the rich do. You know, Jesus, Jesus said it's easier for a uh, for a camel to go through the eye hole of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So he didn't say it's not not impossible. Uh, you know, it can be done. It's just very rare because rich people in general, you know, before they get saved, they don't really believe they have a need uh, for Christ. They have everything in this world. There, there's no immediate need, whereas the poor, we need help, you know, and we meet Jesus in that need uh, for help. Many people are very depressed before they get saved. I know I was, and, and uh, even on the brink of uh, suicide, you know, 
because life was just so miserable, not just financially, but mentally and emotionally and whatnot. Um, you know, those things can bring you down, but God uses those things to draw us unto himself. Okay? In John 6, 44, you cannot come unto me unless the Father draw you. So how does he draw you? He draws you through suffering primarily. Now, you're not generally going to go seeking the Lord if you've got a million dollars in your bank account. And life is just grandiose. You're traveling all over the world. You know, you don't, there's no real need um, to, uh, you know, want to follow the Lord. At any rate, um, Ecclesiastes 4, 6. Better is a handful of quietness than both a handful of travail and vexation of spirit. You, know, you only get that quietness, you only get that peace and contentment when you have a relationship with Christ. Okay? Um, the rich don't have it. There is no peace for the wicked, saith the Lord. Okay? Now, I want to turn your attention to debt. Uh, and Deuteronomy 15 and verse 6, here he's talking uh, to the children of Israel, and uh, he's giving them the ultimatum, uh, you know, if you follow me, if you obey my commands, then I will bless you, and I'll multiply uh, your resources and your seed, but if you don't, uh, then it you know, you're going to be fighting against me. I'm going to take everything away that I gave to you. Um, so verse 6, Deuteronomy 15, 6. For the Lord thy God blesseth thee as he promised thee, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, uh, but thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. <clears throat> the children of Israel, um, when they entered into the promised land, a you know, land of plenty, milk and honey, uh, very fertile land, um, then um, God promised to take care of them that they were going to be the head and not the tail. They, they, they come out of Egypt being the tail, being slaves, okay, but they're entering into the promised land and being the head. Okay, but if you live in disobedience to God, as a child of God, then he will make you the tail. You'll be having to borrow. You'll borrow a bunch of money. You know, borrowing is not good because you, you become a slave of the lender. And you're in debt. You know? When you're in debt, that uh, means you owe somebody. And uh, Romans says, owe no man anything. Uh, Romans 13 and verse 8, and the next verse I want to look at. <clears throat> okay. Oh, no man, anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another is filled, fulfilled the law. Oh, no man, anything. That's what the Word of God says, except love. We, should, we always owe everybody love uh, because. Uh, that's the command, to love your neighbor as yourself. So we're always indebted to our neighbor to love them. But uh, God does not want us in debt. Uh, when you're in debt, like I said, you're limited. You, know? you owe somebody, you're not free. Uh, interest is, is accruing too. So you're having to pay more than you borrowed. In, in most cases, and generally in all cases, even if it's just two or three percent, say on a house or something, you know, well, that's something you need to think about. Are you able to cover that interest? You know, uh, ideally, you don't want to do that. You, you just want to buy the property. You know, not, every, not everybody can do that uh, in the situation that they're in, but. That's the, that's the ideal, and, uh, you know, if you have to borrow, then you should get that low, uh, lowest interest as possible. Uh, you know, it's either you borrow to get a house, 
or you pay rent and you're not gaining anything uh, by paying rent, your money's just going up the chimney, you know, just being burned up. So <clears throat> that's the deal on uh, debt. Okay, it's best not to be in debt. Credit cards, not a good idea unless you're able and disciplined to pay them off every month to pay your balance off and you can get points and rewards and stuff like that uh, but if you're not if you catch yourself not making the paying the balance and just paying the interest then you need to get rid of those credit cards because the, the creditor is going to start taking more money than they actually gave you okay? and you're not gaining anything you know, when you get loans and stuff like that you're borrowing money that you don't have, right? So you have to be very cautious uh, in that and, and make sure that you're going to be able to repay uh, that loan or mortgage or, you know, whatever uh, you are um, having to take out uh, in order to um, get a house or a necessity like that. You don't need the fancy cars, you don't need a new car. Uh, new cars will depreciate very quickly. As soon as you drive them off the lot, they lose, uh, I believe it's 30% of their value. So, you know, you've, you've lost a lot of money as soon as, as soon as you drive that car off the lot. It's better just to buy a, a used car that's in good mechanical uh, condition. Now, The poor, uh, Proverbs 22, 22, Rob not the poor, lest because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. And, uh, you know, we are to help the poor. And the Bible talks a lot about that. And look what Jesus did. He helped the poor. The gospel is preached to the poor. And the poor are the ones that followed him around. He fed the poor, the multitudes. So we're to be doing the same, and not just helping them with the physical needs, I'm sorry about the puppies, but helping them with their spiritual needs, namely uh, sharing the gospel with them. And they need to be born again, first of all. A lot of them aren't, you know, and the poor. They are living in poverty uh, because of their lack of discipline, and uh, they're not saved. They waste a lot of their resources, a the little money that they have, they don't know what to do with it. A lot of them are spending it on drugs and alcohol and things that they don't need, things that hurt them. So it's our job as mature Christians to instruct them in the right and proper way and to uh, share the gospel with them. Once Christ comes into their life, once they begin reading the Bible, you know, then their finances can fall into place and um, uh, they can get things in order. Okay. Um, Deuteronomy 8.18 But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for in it he hath given thee power to get well, uh, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. So it's God that gives wealth, and God that takes the wealth away too. Um, you know, now there's the issue of student loans. Uh, should I take out a loan uh, to go to school? Well, I personally don't believe you should. Um, if God doesn't provide you the means, the resources, if you can't qualify, for the financial um, uh, grants or assistance to get the school paid for and you can't afford it, then I don't believe you should take the loans out uh, because there's no guarantee you're going to be able to pay them back. You know, it's a tough economy we live in now. And it, it always has been in, in that respect. Um, but if, uh, if you don't have the money for it, then you shouldn't. Same with the car. There's no real need to take a loan out on a car. You can save enough money to get a decent car. 
you know, you can get a decent car for three thousand um, dollars, and that's very easy. To, it should not be that big of a deal to save up as long as you're working. You know, three to five thousand dollars gets you something pretty nice. You don't need a, a ten or a fifteen, twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollar car. You won't be able to pay off. Um, so uh, we just want to focus on the necessities, okay? And some things, yes, you may have to borrow for a house example. Not everybody can just buy a house, you know, and, and uh, live in it, uh, pay it off. Some of us are able to do that. We have the knowledge and means and resources to fix a place out. We can buy something cheap. <clears throat> but others cannot do that. So it is better, in my opinion, to take out a mortgage, have your own place, and then to pay rent. Because rent, you're not gaining anything. You're losing a lot. You're losing more money paying rent than if you would be uh, paying on a mortgage. So in order to get a mortgage, you just have to have a job. you got to have, you know, uh, decent credit so the bank will loan that to you. Okay, and so... Um, Job 5 and 15 and He that saveth the poor from the sword um, From the sword from their mouth And from the hand of the mighty So the poor hath help And iniquity stoppeth her mouth So we always be helping the <clears throat> The poor uh, Psalm 41 1 Blessed is he that considereth the poor The Lord will deliver him In time of trouble Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will So, you know, if you're helping the poor, God will deliver you. And you got these uh, television preachers like Joe Osteen, T.D. Jakes, and Joyce Myers. And they got millions of dollars in their bank account. And all they preach is how to succeed. You know, health, wealth, prosperity. You know, they don't preach about giving your money away. They just preach about getting and that's not the gospel at all. Okay, Jesus, uh, he owned everything, but he gave everything away. Right? And all he did, his whole life was was giving. You know, yes, it was proclaiming the truth because he was and is the truth. But look what he did. Look how much he gave and people he healed and all the miracles he performed. That's those are all acts of giving. They didn't pay him to do that stuff. He wouldn't have took their money even anyways. I'm sure some people probably offered. But he did it freely. Look how God gives. God gives us the sun, the moon, the stars, the, the food, the, the rain. The, you know, he gives us everything. Uh, it's all gifts from God. Uh, you know, the more we give, the more God will bless us to give. You know, the more we'll get from God to be pressed down, folded together, and shaken up, you know. So, um, this is going to be somewhat of a short sermon. I'm not going to go on and on. But I hope those few things um, did help you and um, in your, your view and perspective of money. I remember the love of the money is the root of all evil. Not to set your heart on money always wanting to be rich or just you know some people just sell their souls to be rich what is the profit of man Jesus said if he, if he gained the whole world but lose his own soul okay what, what is, kind of profit is that there's no profit at all that's a bad investment a lot of people are doing that a lot of Christians think they got to have all the best of this world these so-called Christians don't know if they really are born again or not. First John 2.15 says, If any man love the, the world, the things in the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You don't, you don't know God. Okay? You're not loving God. You can't serve two masters. You can't, serve, you can't love God and love money like a lot of so-called Christians are doing. You either need to be devoted to God, love God, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That eliminates the love of money. Money is nothing. Money is shouldn't even you shouldn't even think of it like that.
Okay, this life is temporary. Money is temporary. Can't take it with you. Should use it for the furtherance of the gospel to help God's children, to help the poor. All right. And uh, buy your own necessities with it. Work with your hands. You know, do what you need to do to obtain money so you don't have to borrow. You don't need to be begging from other people for money. You know, you do need to work. So a lot of people fall short. They want money. They don't want to work. Don't work that way. So God bless his work and, and he, he gives us uh, money. You know, we're able to get money to buy things. So remember that everything comes from God and that we are to be good stewards of the money and resources he gives to us. Okay, and when you help the poor, you help the needy, you're giving it unto the Lord. Right? You're doing it unto the Lord. Don't give your money. Don't, Give your money to some mega church. They don't need your money. All right? They don't. They got the big bill. They got all that stuff. That's not giving to God. You're giving to the rich. The Bible says you give to the rich. And that that's sinful. Not to do that. So I hope that helps. May God bless your finances and how you use it uh, for His glory. And uh, you'll be blessed if you do. Amen. Yeah, bless you.